Welcome to Wandering Monsters, the show where we play weird games because we love to. I'm Aaron Chalk. I'm Michael Jensen. Today we have Dungeons of Dreadmoor, um, a nice little roguelike um, with uh, intense modding ability, as you're seeing right here, available on Steam and I'm sure other places as well, though I bought it for Steam. Um, and yeah. How, uh, how much is it? It's about, the base game is about 15 bucks. Um, there's three mod or uh, DLCs available. One is free, the other two are I think about three bucks or so. Though it's usually you can get them on sale. Um, being an independent game, it is um, pretty uh, pretty often on sale. Oh, sorry, I lost my train of thought there. Um, so basically, uh, at the beginning we showed you that's the mod screen. Those are the mods I was I was planning on playing with uh, during this little mini run through. Um, and here is your character creation screen. Um, as a roguelike, you don't pick a class or the like, um, like you would in uh, maybe a more traditional RPG. Um, instead, you, hit, you get skills, um, and uh, Dungeons & Dreadmore, in its own goofy way, has all sorts of weird skills, like Viking Wizardry. Hail Odin. <laughs> and Emomancy. And, and necro necro Necronomics. Necroeconomics. Necronecronomics. Something like that. Um, uh, so it's basically split into two two types of skills physical skills and magic skills physical skills um rely on cooldowns before they can be used again um since this is a turn based like a traditional roguelike um it's a certain number of turns before they can be used again and uh, magic skills rely on mp which your character has and replenishes when you either slowly over time or when you drink potions or other liquids usually alcohol related lots of alcohol in this game i like the um communist class <laughs> yeah. or perk there's a lot of weird classes. Uh, the the build I, I did here is a bit, is a more physically based class and in a more defensive based class. I like to play tanky characters, so mm -hmm. that's why I picked this one the first time through. I tried uh, using the random feature to pick a random character, um, random set of skills for my character, and it didn't work out very well. I died very quickly. I'm, so. I like the um, I like the really big eyebrows. <laughs> that's that is a distinctive visual feature. You and your eyebrows are entering the dungeon of Dreadmore. Um, so basically, this is uh, this is the gameplay here. Um, it's pretty standard, um, kind of top-down view, a pseudo, you know, kind of 3D kind of view. Um, it's like a basic roguelike. It, it is turn-based, so you move, and then your enemies move. If you stand still, no one moves, and you can stand still and play in your moves as long as you want. That's me disarming traps there after stepping on some of them. Um, step on a lot of traps, sadly. Uh... And combat is, is usually, there's two different ways of doing it. You either just click on the enemy, like I did right there, and you just whack them um, with a physical attack, whatever you have in your character's hand, or you can use skills like I did right there as well, mm -hmm. and the beeble person dies. So I noticed well, when you stepped on the traps, it didn't look like you took damage. It depends on the trap. Sometimes you can dodge them, mm -hmm. and sometimes it depends on the trap. Some traps are weak. Usually the traps that, even though I, I picked the tinkering skill, which is your trapping skill, um, the traps that I can disarm at this level are pretty weak. Uh, you'll notice I'll run into one right here that yeah, I only have a 45% chance of disarming, so I decided to just leave that one alone rather than have it uh, whack me. Mm -hmm. um, the other differences between this and your standard roguelike are um, there is permadeath, but you can click it off um, if you so desire, and there's a lot more stuff um, because there's a fairly robust crafting system in this game. Um, and the ability to store items. You get that later. You're not going to see it in this walkthrough. But usually you find uh, by the end of your first uh, level uh, of the dungeon um, an item that, that gives you access to a place to store your stuff. Particularly like um, this, the um, Inconsequentia <laughs> Goddess of Quest, Side Quest. Goddess of Side Quest, Inconsequentia. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of just goofy um, homage homages to the, the tropes of RPGs um, and uh, other... Uh, types of games and as well as other types of pop media um, and then of course you add the massive modding ability of the game and you get everything from uh, uh, space marine uh, skills to um, my little pony uh, friendship is magic uh, skills which lets you play and slaughter if that's your thing ponies um, 
and I'm sure that will make everyone happy in one way or another. Mm-hmm. And then Krong. Yeah, yes. all all exaltations to Krong. Um, yeah, I mean, this is this is the pretty much the game. I was going to show a bunch more gameplay video, but it, it, like a roguelike, it's pretty much the same. You wander through dungeons, which are randomly generated, kill Diggles and Bumblebee persons and floating potatoes and all sorts of other manner of weirdness. Uh, pray to the Luke Fish God, if that's your thing, and um, level up, which you'll see uh, fairly shortly uh, after I finish praying to yet another statue of Inconsequentia. Um, it's just, it's a fun, goofy little game. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it's, and for those of you who enjoy modding, there's a, you can make your own mods as well. Um, and they're easily, um, added to your game via this Steam Workshop. Have you tried, have you tried it out? I have not. I, I, I will admit that, um, I'm mostly a browser when it comes to mods. Sure. Um, I've done this for, for all the games that I have that are uh, the Fallout games as well as others that, um. I, I basically leave that to professionals or the semi-professionals. Yeah. I liked how um, back there we picked up a drink. It was just like a milk carton that you would see in school. Yeah. 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 It's there's it, And there's there's a narwand. Um, there's just a bunch of weird stuff that, and, and a lot of it, um, like the character class uh, names, you have to kind of figure out through trial and error. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't give you any idea of what a emo mancer does other than the fact that you're emo, I guess. Um, and you have to like pick it and go into a game and go into the skill list and and as you can see I'm leveling up right here, uh, go into the skill list and pick the skill that shows you what all what's available on all the various skills you play. Right. I end up going with the second level of Clockwork Knight, which is Rocket Punch, which is an excellent long range attack available for your physical characters. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. So that's pretty much it. Um. I think. We should probably get into our good things and our bad things. Here, Michael is going to stand in for me and, and give you some good things about this game. Well, one of the things I liked first, right off the bat, was the um, humor. Sort of. I, I don't know. I like the idea of being an emo mancer. I can imagine <laughs> what that would entail. Or, um, I don't know what being a communist would do in a world <laughs> like, but. I've never picked that skill, to be honest with you. I'm tempted to buy this just to try that out. I, I can tell you I know what some what one of the emo mancer skill is uh is you can you teleport an enemy away because you are um you are so alone that you can't stand their presence or some some such nonsense. <laughs> All right. Well, um sorry. I got you sidetracked. One of the uh, the other things I liked right off the bat was um the modding. Just you know like uh, modding was a big thing for me in Oblivion. Yeah. So just being able to plug in mods. Sure. And everything from, um, in this game, there's everything from uh, individual skills, mm-hmm. which is basically a fairly small addition that just adds to that list of skills you can pick from, to complete overhauls of the crafting system and the level design. Uh, whatever you feel most, um, I guess, ambitious about. So. And so, um, speaking of mods, I guess that sort of dovetails into the replayability. Yeah. Because, I mean, most roguelikes. If they're by their nature replayable because they're randomly generated each time, but with mods, you can actually like, have a meaningfully different experience right. if you so desire. Yeah. Um. All right. And uh, so I'm going to give you some bad things, which are kind of nitpicky because I really do kind of like this game. Yeah. But um, <laughs> there is a monster zoo. This is, uh, I guess, not a, not one of my bad things, but this is one terrible, terrible way to die. Here is open up a door and find 211 monsters waiting for you. Um. The bad things are, um, the, it is, though replayable by nature, the actual mechanics are repetitive. Yeah. Um, especially when you find some, some, some skills are just better than others. Mm-hmm. And, and there is kind of a best path. Not 100% because you can vary it, but um, so there's, there's that. Um, the other thing is, is sometimes they don't give you enough information, like the, when the character creation screen. I know this is kind of nitpicky, but um, they, they don't give you a, a, like what, the skills do they don't let you look at the skills before you pick them and go into a game again not the end of the world but kind of annoying um and then the third thing again in the piggy is music is very forgettable yeah I, I usually end up listening to something of my own at this at the time while i'm watching it or playing the game so mm-hmm. um that's it for this week that's dungeons of dreadmore go out and get it i think um both michael and i agree that it is definitely a good buy yeah it looks cool yeah so um go out get it enjoy it And uh, be back next week for more Wandering Monsters. Bye. Bye.